Welcome to the Potential Difference Research Lab. In this video today we're going to be looking at uh, Hans Christian Oested's uh, Law of Creation of Energy Discovery from 1820 to 2024 and uh, Oested's discovery Faraday's application, Faraday's application of the law of creation of energy in performing positive and negative work, uh, Emil Lenz's formula for the negative work that's performed in Faraday generators, and uh, our discovery in 2007 that uh, Lenz's law could be reversed and positive work could be performed with created electromagnetic uh, energy uh, at infinite efficiency. So in 1820 Hans Christian Oested discovered the law of creation of energy at the University of Copenhagen, Osted employed created electromagnetic field energy in order to perform positive work on a compass needle uh, and increase the compass needle's kinetic energy. And uh, according to the work energy principle, now the work energy principle uh, is going to be applied in every single uh, instance in this uh, video presentation. It's the most important component with regards to analyzing uh, the type of work that's being performed and the energy that's required to perform the work. So it doesn't matter if the work that's being performed is positive work where the kinetic energy of the body or system is increasing or negative work where the body where the kinetic energy of the body or system is decreasing and uh, it doesn't matter the direction of the work um, but the uh, the main factor is that when work is performed, energy is required. And with regards to Hans Christian Oested deflecting or changing the kinetic energy of a compass needle, the energy uh, that is performing that work is created electromagnetic field energy. So once again, According to the work energy principle, the compass needle's kinetic energy increase equals the positive work performed on the compass needle, which equals the magnitude of electromagnetic field energy created, which is required to perform the positive work. And uh, the law of creation of energy that Osted discovered in 1820, although he didn't realize it at the time. Electromagnetic field energy is created at the subatomic quantum electron level in every current bearing wire via electron fission and electron fusion. When an electromotive force is applied or induced in a current bearing wire, electrons are forced out of their valence orbits via electron fission and they cascade within the wires as electric current. When the unstable electrons return back down to their valence orbits via electron fusion, they create and emit photons which create and constitute the electromagnetic field photon energy around the current bearing wire, which is what we see here. The kinetic energy increase of the compass needle equals, equals the work performed on the compass needle and 
it equals the energy required to perform the work. And in Osted's compass needle experiment, that energy is internally created uh, electron energy uh, or uh, created electromagnetic field energy. In 1822, Michael Faraday confirms Osted's law of creation of energy discovery when he employs created electromagnetic field energy to perform positive work and increase the kinetic energy of a rigid wire that rotated around a permanent magnet submerged in a bowl of mercury. The rigid wire's kinetic energy increase equals the positive work performed which also equals the magnitude of electromagnetic field energy created which is responsible to perform the work. And in 1831, Oste, or Michael Faraday discovers that he can use created electromagnetic field energy in order to perform negative work in uh, electricity generation when he formulated Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And what Faraday discovered was that when he moved a permanent magnet towards a coil of wire, the coil of wire, the magnetic field energy created around the coil of wire would perform negative work and reduce the kinetic energy of the approaching magnet. And then when he pulled the magnet away, the the chain, the direction of the current in the coil of wire would perform negative work and uh, resist the uh, departure of the magnet from the coil of wire. So the in in electricity generation, the created electromagnetic field energy around the generator coil is always performing negative work. It's always reducing the kinetic energy of um, the magnet that is inducing the current in the conductor in the first place. In 1834, Faraday replaced his permanent magnet with an electromagnet, an electromagnetic plunger, which he plunged into a generator coil. And he also, again, uh, confirmed that negative work was being performed by the created electromagnetic field energy around the generator coil that resisted the kinetic energy or reduced the kinetic energy of the approaching electromagnetic plunger. And once again, the kinetic energy decrease of the plunger is equal to the negative work performed on the plunger, which also equals the magnitude of created electromagnetic field energy, which is required to perform the negative work. In uh, everyday practical applications, what we have is a prime mover that uh, provides mechanical power to the drive shaft of a generator, and then the, the created electromagnetic field energy inside the generator produces a counter electromagnetic torque, it performs negative work and decelerates the prime mover under load and the uh, created electromagnetic field energy inside the generator uh, performs negative work on the prime mover 
and the neg the the reduction of the prime mover's kinetic energy is equal to the magnitude uh, magnitude of created electromagnetic field energy in the Faraday generator. And uh, everybody knows what the consequences are with regards to uh, CO2 production and the negative work that is performed by Faraday generators since 1834, uh, where 100% of all the CO2 air pollution and nuclear waste that is produced during electricity generation is due to Faraday generator uh, negative work performance. And uh, in electric vehicle applications, uh, electric vehicles are decelerated, their kinetic energy is reduced by created electromagnetic field energy uh, which performs negative work and reduces the kinetic energy of EVs. In uh, practical terms, a 1,000 pound, 1,000 kilogram EV traveling at 60 kilometers an hour has 138,890 joules of kinetic energy stored in it and during regenerative braking the EV's kinetic energy can be reduced to zero joules and the EV's speed can be reduced to zero kilometers an hour and in order to perform 180, 138,890 joules of negative work, 138,890 joules of electromagnetic field energy must be created in order to perform that negative work. And in 1834, Emil Lenz formulated Lenz's law of induction, which is the minus sign in front of Faraday's law of induction, in order to explain why um, electromagnetic field, why created electromagnetic field energy performs negative work when a magnet is approaching a generator coil or uh, receding away from a generator coil. And again, in electricity generation, the counter torque that's produced by the generator is explained in Lenz's law with the minus sign in front of Faraday's law of induction and the magnitude of prime mover kinetic energy reduction equals the magnitude of negative work performed by the generator which equals the magnitude of created electromagnetic field energy that is created inside the generator's current bearing wires at the subatomic quantum electron level. In Lenz's law is applicable in electric vehicle operation during regenerative braking where the kinetic energy of the EV, uh, the kinetic energy reduction of the EV is equal to the magnitude of negative work performed which equals the magnitude of electromagnetic field energy that's created inside the EV's generator. In 2007, we discovered that when we introduce a load current time delay into the operation of a generator coil, 
we could use created electromagnetic field energy to increase the kinetic energy of a permanent magnet when it's approaching a generator coil and we replaced the minus sign from in front of Faraday's law of induction with a positive sign denoting that positive work is now being performed with created electromagnetic field energy rather than negative work. And uh, the, the kinetic energy increase of the permanent magnet is equal to the magnitude of created electromagnetic field energy. And with regards to electricity generation, um, this is Heinz's law of induction again with the plus sign. That means that a complementary electromagnetic torque is produced by the, electric, the electric generator, which works in concert with the torque direction supplied by the prime mover. And the Regenx generator accelerates and increases the kinetic energy of the prime mover when generating electricity and once again the kinetic energy increase of the prime mover equals the magnitude of created electromagnetic field energy inside the Regenx generator. And here is a video demonstrating uh, conventional Faraday generator operation um, negative work being performed with created electromagnetic field energy and positive work being performed uh, once at infinite efficiency with uh, created and time delayed electromagnetic field energy and in this video you'll see the load current sine wave for the conventional Faraday generator coil and then the load current sine wave for the Regenx generator coil which is delayed in the time domain by about 50 degrees well between 50 and 90 degrees and uh, <clears throat> The main difference between uh, Lenz's law of induction <clears throat> and Heinz's law of induction is the time delayed electric current and the time delayed creation of the electromagnetic field energy which performs positive work and uh, assists the changing magnetic field meaning that it uh, accelerates it and increases its kinetic energy and Heinz's law of induction induce, introduces a plus sign in Faraday's law of induction meaning that positive work is being performed with the created electromagnetic field energy rather than negative work that is being performed in Faraday generators according to Lenz's law of induction. And in electric mobility applications, uh, Heinz's law of induction performs positive work and it increases the kinetic energy of the EV while uh, recharging the EV's batteries <clears throat> and this video you can see the you can see the increase in kinetic energy of the system during regenerative acceleration and the decrease of the system in Faraday generator operation during regenerative braking. 
So positive work being performed at infinite efficiency uh, with created electromagnetic field energy above 30 kilometers an hour and negative work being performed at infinite efficiency below 30 kilometers an hour providing EV regenerative acceleration and EV regenerative braking. And the main difference between existing uh, electric mobility applications is the need for massive amounts of batteries and energy storage uh, in order to provide suitable driving range, whereas the regenerative acceleration EV only requires enough batteries to get it up to uh, cruising speed where the regenerative acceleration generator takes over and provides um, EV kinetic energy increase or EV acceleration with battery recharging and the more power that's sent to the batteries the more the EV is accelerated And the difference between Lenz's Law of Induction and Heinz's Law of Induction is the frequency of operation of the Regenx generator coil such that below the critical minimum frequency of operation negative work is performed and above it uh, positive work is performed. And that's evident in the electric uh, vehicle scenario where the Regen X generator coils are operated above their critical minimum frequency above or around 30 kilometers an hour and then below their critical minimum frequency below 30 kilometers an hour and um, Lenz's law of induction and the First law of thermodynamics for electricity generation and Heinz's law of induction and the new first law of thermodynamics for electricity generation um, in conventional electricity generation the greater the output the greater the input needs to be increased and the greater the losses in the system because of the uh, mechanical resistance between the generator and prime mover and in the Regen X generator operation the greater the output of electric output the greater the reduction of input energy required the less power consumption by the prime mover because the Regen X generator produces uh, complementary electromagnetic torque which assists the prime mover rather than resisting it and um, the new first law of thermodynamics which sows a decrease in input energy and heat expended in the prime mover the more work uh, is performed so this is the first law of thermodynamics for Faraday electricity generation and this is the new first law of thermodynamics for Regenx generator electricity generation. And on our current, this is our current uh, trajectory with uh, conventional generators and this is our trajectory with uh, Regenx generators and the new first law of thermodynamics and here are some replication instructions for anybody that wants to confirm uh, Heinz's law of induction positive work being performed with created electromagnetic field energy um, 
according to the new first law of thermodynamics and um, uh, a good, good example of how the critical minimum frequency of operation dictates um, Faraday generator operation and Regenx generator operation. So recently, uh, artificial intelligence has published a summary of our uh, 2007 discovery, which states that Thane Hines developed a technology to eliminate generator armature reaction. In fact, our initial goal was to reduce generator armature reaction by 10%. And um, in 2007, we discovered we could actually completely reverse it. So to eliminate generator armature reaction, which was responsible for 100% of the pollution from electricity generation that requires mechanical input energy, his discovery in 2007 showed that armature reaction could be reversed, allowing electricity to be generated at infinite efficiency with zero mechanical input energy, zero input energy cost or pollution. This reversal also enables electric vehicles Uh, regenerative acceleration and potentially unlimited EV driving range. The energy source powering this positive work at infinite efficiency is constantly being created at the subatomic quantum electron level, matching the previously unknown en energy source that powered the negative work of conventional electric generators since 1834. So since 1834 if you asked a physicist or electrical engineer why do electric generators perform negative work uh, what is the energy source they would not be able to tell you and in fact uh, most of them today still can't do it when in fact the energy source that's required to perform the negative work in electric generators is electromagnetic field energy that was discovered by Hans Christian Oested in 1820. And the new created energy source provides a sustainable complement to fossil fuels by removing their negative effects and enabling a more gradual and financially sustainable transition to clean energy. This means that when electromagnetic field energy is employed to perform positive work in electricity generation rather than negative work, 100% of the fossil fuel CO2 and air pollution emissions can be eliminated in the electricity generation phase. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Cheers for now.